Let's try another scenario, very much like the last one that we looked at, except this time we're going to add the rests ourselves. So let's say we were in simple meter. Example A is going to be in simple meter. I pick 3, 4 time. Example B will be in compound meter, or 6, 8 time. Let's close out the rest of each one of these measures by adding the proper rests in the proper order. So in 3, 4 time, we have 3 beats in the measure. We need some kind of a representative, character representative, in this case rests, of course, to sit above each of the spaces that are reserved for beat 2 and beat 3. We can't just do whatever we want, because if we put in a half note rest, it would mathematically be accurate, but there'd be nothing sitting here representing beat 3. We need something representing beat 3, because there are three strong beat units, one particularly strong one, in 3-4 time. We need something there. Each one's a quarter note in value, so we need a quarter note rest to occupy both of these spaces. Anything else would be an inaccurate uh, thing to do. So here we have beat number one, uh, and I'm going to put some place markers for beats two and beat three. Obviously, this does include beat two, because it's longer or larger than beat one. So we need to close out beat two with an eighth note rest, because beat one already occupies the first eighth note of beat two with the dot. So this is a syncopation. So we're going to close out beat 2 with, this, with the 8th note rest. So now everything's occupied up to beat 3. And we're free to put in uh, some simple math here, a quarter note rest to close out the measure. So this is correct. Putting in a dotted quarter note rest here would be mathematically accurate, but it wouldn't show a representative on beat 3. Here we had no choice. We would like to show something on beat 2. We could break up this dotted note and have it tied to an 8th note. But if this is the way we wrote this, we have to finish the beat unit here by the subdivision that we've broken into, at this, in this case the eighth note, and then we can close out the measure um, with a standard quarter note rest. Here we've already broken into the first level of subdivision. Uh, we have an eighth note, so we have to finish the rest of the beat, to finish the rest of beat number one. In order to do that, we have to close it out with an eighth note rest. Beat number two has no problems, so we're going to give it a full value. Full rest, full beat unit rest. Same thing with beat number three. So that's pretty simple. Beat number one in the final measure here has broken into the second level of subdivision. The primary beat unit is a quarter note. The first level of subdivision is eighth notes. The second level of subdivision, a further breakdown, is sixteenth notes. So we have to use the same value that we've broken down to, in this case a sixteenth note, for the next rest. That evens us out to be just an eighth note now. Now we are at liberty to finish up the rest of the beat with an eighth note value. So see, whatever level you've broken down to to start with, you have to finish or continue with that level of rest until you get up to the next level. Here we, could, we, we were free to use the eighth note rest. Now all of beat number one is occupied, taken care of, finished. Beat number two, beat number three, quarter note rest each, and we've closed out that example. Compound meter, remember in 6-8 time, the dotted quarter note equals the beat. So we have two of these per measure. So this is beat number one, a dotted quarter note. Beat number two has nothing. We need a rest here. We are free to use a dotted quarter rest here because that is our primary beat unit. So we don't want to add dots just arbitrarily, augmentation dots arbitrarily to rest. We can't do that. That would be an inaccurate thing to do in simple meter, but it's a very accurate thing to do in compound meter. This is the beat unit, so this rest can safely have that. Here, uh, in, on the downbeat, we've broken down to the first level of subdivision. Remember, each primary beat unit in 6-8 in time is a dotted quarter note. So we have the equivalent of three eighth notes occupying beat number one. Here's the first one, second, and the third. This now is a complete beat number one. Beat number two can have the dotted quarter rest. We can't really put the three eighth notes there because we would be continuing in some divisions. That would be a bit odd when we have just a standard, a strong beat unit here. This would be the proper way to write this. Beat one, we had to close it out with subdivision rests, or eighth note rest, because we started with an eighth note. But then on beat number two, we were at liberty to use the full uh, beat unit rest, or a dotted quarter rest in this case. And over here for beat number one, if we add a sixteenth note, we have to continue at the level of subdivision that we started at. So we need, in other words, a sixteenth note rest, because this is a sixteenth note. So now we have the, equ the equivalent of an eighth note. 
we know that in this meter, the subdivision is eighth notes. The first one-third of the beat is here, the second third is here now, the third third is here. That's the first half of our measure. Beat number one is entirely wrapped up here, so we are now free to write the dotted quarter rest for beat number two. What if we wanted an entire measure of rest for the final measure? It would be really easy to think that we'd put a half dotted half note rest here because that would be the equivalent of a whole measure of rest. Or in other words, another possibility would be this. And many people would think that would be the thing to do. Beat number one, beat number two. It makes sense mathematically. However, whenever you want one complete measure of rest, regardless of the meter you're in, you always want to write a whole note rest even though that's mathematically too much for this meter, this is what we're used to seeing. And this is the way you should write one entire measure of rest, even though I know it's mathematically unsound. So spend your time looking at other scores. One of my favorite sources for this, because it's free and it's vast, is imslp.org. You can find scores from anything in the public domain, a great number of things in the public domain, and look at what these scores are and listen to the music. Listen to what comes out of these. Be observant. Don't just gloss through it or just uh, read through your own uh, voicings of things. If you play the oboe, it's, it's great to look at oboe music, but it's also great to look at other musics too. Maybe the trombone, maybe the bassoon, maybe the violoncello, uh, you name it. So look at the music that's happening and see how, people, see how composers write these things. Making these grammatically sound choices makes a huge difference. It's easy to sit back and say, yeah, I can write this any way I want, who cares, I mean... But when you hand these to other musicians to play your music, it's just like handing them a bunch of bad grammar. It, if it's hard to discern what it is, then you're not going to get the results that you'd like to get when the performance actually happens. So paying attention to these tenets and rules is extremely important. When we're writing rests inside of figures, beam figures that represent beat units, it's okay to place them inside of the beam unit without breaking the beam. So, for instance, in, in common time here, uh, we, we could have beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, and beat 4, and we don't need to break up the beam units because whenever you're beaming groups, and we'll talk about this again in the meters, meter chapter later, and you should probably already know this, we only beam to the beat. So you don't beam past a beat unit, or you don't cut short of a beat unit if you can avoid that. So this all represents beat 1, all four 16th notes. Uh, so if we wanted to rest on the second 16th note of our first group, it's okay to place it inside the beam unit like this. We would, of course, break uh, this area here, so you'd have a 16th note represented here, and then the other two here, with the rest uh, nested inside, the 16th note rest nested inside. Beat unit 2 is like this. If we wanted to rest on the third 16th of the beat, we could place it inside the unit just like this complete, intact, without breaking that bottom beam, and it shows one beat unit quickly. It's easy to identify what the three beat, four beat units are in this meter. One, two, three, looks a little bit odd that way, and then four. In beat three, we don't have a choice. Uh, the first three sixteenths are all connected, and the fourth one is where the sixteenth note rest is, so this would be the way to write that properly, and then beat four could be like this, if it was a quarter note. Uh, I wrote it incorrectly down here. It's not actually incorrect so much as it's just it's certainly less aesthetically pleasing, uh, it's less accurate. If I break up the beat units, then it's difficult to see, see that this is all beat 1, this is all comprising beat 1, all comprising beat 2. So if we observe these rules, it's a lot easier to read this music, or especially to sight read this music, than it is to see a bunch of obstructions like this. Here's an example of what's called a multi-measure rest. This is done to save a lot of space in scores, especially in parts for scores. So for instance, if we were going to try to perform Robert Schumann's Symphony No. 2 in C major, so it was 61, uh, this is from the Sostenuto Asai movement, these are the first two measures, they're actually the first 25 measures. Uh, the timpani, um, percussionists often get this, uh, they get to see a lot of these because they don't get to play as often as maybe string players. Um, but for instance, the, the percussionist at this time playing the timpani, with the timpani tuned to C and one tuned to G, would sit tacit for 24 measures. So they had to sit there and count 24 measures of 6-4 time before they finally come in and strike that C-tuned timpani briefly, rest it out, 
and then there's a little bit more action actually a couple measures later but um, for a while they sit quiet but this takes up a lot less space on a score than 24 blank measures of space and nobody wants to look at 24 or more blank measures of space uh, with just whole rests sitting endlessly it's, it's not very fun so this not only saves space and time it just makes everything far more economical um, to, to have to deal with as a player. Um, so multi-measure rests are very common to do. Whenever you have series of long stretches of rests, uh, measures with complete tacit, tacitness, uh, it's best to try to use multi-measure rests wherever you can.